Good afternoon, cult members, and welcome to Pop Culture Cult. This is Sean, and this is going to be our uh, will be non-spoiler to start, and then a little bit of spoilers at the end. Uh, discussion, review, reaction to Into the Dark, the newest novel from the Star Wars High Republic line. This is the third book in, to come out in the series. Uh, we got the uh, uh, Light of the Jedi, and then we got Test of Courage. This is the first YA novel, and it's going to be, and it's from Claudia Gray, who is actually one of my favorite Star Wars authors. She did Lost Stars, which is my gateway drug that I give everybody for getting into the publishing part of Star Wars. She also did Master Commander, Bloodline, Leia, Princess of Alderaan. Uh, all, I just loved all of her books that she's done so far. And so when they announced this Project Luminous that ended up being The High Republic, she was one of the authors that was announced that I was super excited about hearing from. And knowing that they all worked together to create this new part of the Star Wars universe was something that was really exciting to me. This book is a little interesting for me. Um, I'm, initially, I'm going to say that I really liked it. Uh, my issue I'm coming off of right now is it is coming off of what I think is one of the best Star Wars Star Wars books that ever came out, and that is Light of the Jedi, the first book from Calvin Kevin Scott. That book is uh, very few books or do I want to go back and re-listen to or reread, and that one got me. Like I want to go reread it and re-listen to it. Uh, right now this one is really good I, i'm going to preface all of thing everything i'm going to say from here on out with the idea of i don't know if i'm going to revisit this unless i feel like i have to going forward uh it's not saying that the story isn't good i love the story i love the concept of everything that's around it it follows a padawan uh wreath silas uh, who is uh, directly connected to a major character in Light of the Jedi, uh, Jorah Maul, Mali. Uh, no spoilers for that book, but uh, the, they get separated in their travels to the Starlight Beacon. And a lot of what happens to Wreath is because of that separation between the two of them. And I really like that he is, uh, he is not a naturally gifted Jedi. He is somebody who has to work at it. Yes, he is force sensitive. Yes, he is uh, em embraces the the concept of the Jedi and stuff like that. But he also has to work at it. He uh, feels under underpowered. I guess is the best way to put it uh, compared to his other uh, Padawan friends. Uh, in the academy at this point in time and i just uh, I, I really appreciate that part of the story uh we get some uh, introduction of uh, uh dez uh who was jorah's first padawan who is uh kind of this uh i want to see adventure adventure seeking is the best way to put it which is very uh, very contrast to what wreath is wreath that wants to spend all of his time in the arch archive he's very much sam from game of thrones he'd much rather be reading books than going out in in the fight kind of thing uh we also get uh orla orla and cormac who are both padawan f friends from their time as padawans and the book goes back and forth between the crisis that they are all dealing with and their previous adventure together when they were padawans and now they're jedi knights and how they're working their way through the trauma of a previous event while all this is going on. Uh, we also get some really fun characters in this, uh, this book, uh, Linux, who is the captain of the, uh, of the ship that they are, the transport ship that they are on. He is super fun, uh, very kind of dude ish kind of laid back, uh, doesn't really want to wear the uniform of the guild, the transportation guild, uh, that he is part of and the Bryn, the Brian, Brian, uh, guild. He's, you know, open shirt and beads and very relaxed and cool and chill. Uh, but very, also very, um, uh, Dalai Lama Zen kind of about the world and the universe and stuff. Uh, his co-pilot is Alfie. Alfie and Wreath are about the same age. And so there's some fun 
uh, flirtation that goes on in there. Uh, and we also get this uh, really cool scene, uh, a really cool point where Wreath kind of is, yeah, maybe, but I've also kind of, eh, and, and, uh, uh, who is it? Cormac in his inner dialogue, no spoiler. Well, it's a little bit of a spoiler before the book, but Cormac is like, ah, we all have to go through that. We made a choice to go down a different path and, and, uh, and sometimes young love is young love. Uh, the other, the only other character I want to talk about that's in the transport ship is Geo. Now, Geode. Geode was a character that when they first introduced him, I was, um, I was confused on how they were going to explain him. And uh, the only thing I'm going to say, and you kind of figure it out as you go along the book, that. Uh, uh, Connections with beings who aren't verbal can be not a force sensitive thing. That's about the best way I'm going to explain it. And we'll just let it go at that. The big thing about this book is that, that they are uh, directly affected by the great disaster that happens that starts off light of the, uh, the light of the Jedi book. And they are stuck. They're in hyperspace. They're going to starlight beacon and they have to jump out of, of uh, hyperspace and they go to this open area in space and it ne ends up being near a, a star station a star uh star base essentially that has been abandoned for thousand for hundreds and hundreds of years and while they are in there in that while they're trying to seek refuge and there's other ships that were that happen to fall out of or come out of hyperspace in that same area they all deal with the ramifications of trying to interact with each other and there's people who are trying to steal and there's other people trying to just live and there's like a luxury liner uh but all of them interacting with each other but they find there that there's an evil um that is that is affecting the jedi and it's it's interesting that a lot of this book deals with a lot of the the thought process the 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 dealing the Je Jedi dealing with everyday Jedi stuff. Uh, when do I use violence? When do uh, what's good uh, for one species is not always good for another species, and and the idea of taking life is a last resort. And I feel that although this book doesn't have as much action as a Lie of the Jedi, it's very introspective about what it means to be a Jedi, specifically in this time of the universe, the galaxy, because the idea is this is the height of the Jedi at their power. And several different Jedi within this book have to deal with different parts of what it means to be a Jedi. You have a Padawan's view of the world. You have a old, uh, older experienced who's been through the battles and, and, and questions if it's worth it all. You have another who is leaving the order altogether to, uh, start their own path. Uh, you have one Jedi who, is all about the adventure and the call for himself and not actually willing to serve uh, the way he probably should within the Jedi Order. And so that concept is a lot of fun to deal with. And uh, I, I think that just, if this was maybe the fifth book in the series or the seventh book in the series, I feel like that, I think that would be more interesting for me right now then coming off directly off of light of the jedi now i have not done test of courage test of courage is a book that i'm interested in the problem with it is it's a, it's a young reader it's 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 for a much younger audience as much as light of the jedi was for much more of an adult audience and claudia gray does ya very well this one didn't grab me as much as i wanted it to i'm not saying i didn't like it i liked it but many times within this book I felt myself falling away from it or getting distracted or pulled away or thinking about something else. Uh, and so that process was something that actually uh, surprised me 
because it is Claudia Gray, it is the High Republic and it is a Star Wars book. And I don't know if that's just a me issue or if that is uh, a ramification of what they're doing within this book. All that being said, I would highly recommend this book. Uh, a little bit of spoiler talk as we go from here on out. So thank you if you've listened so far. If you uh, if please do you know like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a little bit of spoilers. The big bad. There's the 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 Nihil, who are the big bad that were introduced in Light of the Jedi and in the comics, uh, also show up in this book, but in a different way. They're kind of a red herring. They're they're playing. Uh, uh, they're they're portraying themselves in a different form than what we how how we were introduced to them in Light of the Jedi. However, the big big bad in this are the Dringir. Dringir were introduced uh, to us uh, in the uh, Target exclusive something or other that came out in November. But this uh, is an interesting bad guy. They're sentient plants who obviously have some kind of connection to the dark side or or something along that line. They're definitely they are the the Jedi are definitely feel the presence of them and the the their evilness compared to the Nihil. Uh, the Nihil are just straight up bad. These uh, the Denjir feel much more like uh, a, a Sith like characters and they are actually they even actually even mentioned that they've the sith temple uh and on coruscant and they made several comments about how we haven't felt this kind of evil since the times of the sith and stuff like that so it has a nice connective tissue uh, i find them interesting as a bad bad guy that they're going to continue on with uh you're going to have the drendir and the nihil the nihil the big big bads and then you have the drendir who will be you know something else but uh, I found them interesting. I, because I listened to the audio book, the, the they they, be, because you get you know the sound effects and everything with the the audio books. I I just uh, I wasn't scared of them. I wasn't awed by them like I was within uh, *Light of the Jedi* and when they introduced the the evilness of the Nihil. They are scary. Um, and so maybe that was the point, but I didn't feel dread when they show up in a scene. And, uh, maybe that's because they didn't spend enough time. They didn't want to spend too much time. Let's put it that way. Uh, giving it, giving out what they want to do and stuff like that. So, uh, I just, I, I really like them. I think it's interesting that, uh, what we're going to get and what we could get with them going forward, but I wasn't as afraid of them as I was say with the Nihil when they were introduced. Uh, a little bit of connective tissue, uh, obviously, with the other uh, High Republic books. There's also connection to Master and Apprentice in this book, uh, the Knights of the Old Republic, um, uh, the Thrawn books, uh, the Rise of Kylo Ren comic. There's uh, places and drinks and food and all these different connective tissue to all these different things. Star Wars Explained has got a great video on all the different things that how they connect to other parts of the Star Wars story. And so uh, please uh, look at that. It's really cool. Um, I, I'm really happy with this book. But like I said earlier, I don't know if this is something I'm going to revisit like I am with The Light of the Jedi. Uh, I will probably leave this lower on my list of books that I would suggest to other f other friends. However, if they get into the High Republic a little bit, I will suggest this one be the follow-up to Light of the Jedi. At least as we sit right now, knowing that there's more books coming down the line. So that is my thoughts and, and, and a little bit of review on Into the Dark by Claudia Gray, the newest book on the High Republic universe of star wars let us know what you thought of the book our reaction to it in the comments down below please be nice there's a requirement around here also like this video subscribe to the channel hit the bell for notifications and follow us on all the social media stuff facebook instagram and twitter links are in the description down below and until next time cult members this is the way